Hey guys, in this video I have a really simple mini project for you. We're going to be building a filterable list using just plain JavaScript. We're also going to use Materialize CSS as the front end UI. So if we look over here, we have this my contacts and it's not really a contact list. It's just a list of names, but it's it's basically the premise for a contact application. And we have this input up here and if I start to type here, if I put a B in here, you'll see it'll filter out everything that doesn't have a B in it. And if I keep typing, if I put an R, it's going to filter out to Brad because that's the only name that actually has a B and an R in it. All right. And if I start, if I type more and it doesn't match anything, obviously nothing's going to show up. And it's very reactive. If I go and I delete, you'll see that everything will come right back. So it, it's pretty easy. It's a pretty simple project. It is the weekend and I, I spend, the, you know, most of the weekend with my kids. But I did want to just do something really quick for you guys. All right. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time job in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. All right, so I have a blank index HTML file here, and I'm using Atom for my text editor. I'm using Atom Live Server to display it over here, and I have it in a, in a folder called Filterable List. And this is the only file we're going to need for this project. It's going to be very simple. So let's put an exclamation tab. And if you have Emmet installed, what that'll do is it'll just generate uh, a basic HTML structure. It'll give you head tags, body tags, your viewport. Um, I would highly recommend installing Emmet as a plugin. If you don't have it, then just go ahead and type this out, at least just the head and body tags. And for the title, let's go ahead and we'll just put in my contacts. And we're going to be using materialized CSS. So let's grab that from the CDN. Okay, which is right here. We'll get it from CDNJS.com. We're not using any of the JavaScript widgets, so we just need the CSS. So we're going to put it inside of a link tag here. Let's go ahead and paste that in. All right, and we can close that up. And then inside the body, let's put a container div because that's going to kind of, you know, auto out the margin, push it to the middle, just like any other framework. And we're going to put an H1 in here and let's give it a class of align dash center, which is a materialized class to push it to the center. And we're just going to say my contacts. Okay, and that should auto reload. Let me just test that out. All right, so it is auto reloading. Um, why is that not centered? Is it aligned center? No, it's center aligned. Sorry about that. That's one of the things that sucks about using so many different frameworks is because sometimes you just you get the class names mixed up. All right. Now, under that, we're going to use a collection. OK, a collection in materializes is, is pretty much like a list group in Bootstrap, which is just a fancy way of styling a UL. So let's go ahead and put a UL and we're going to give this a class of collection. And we're also going to give it a class of with dash header just like that. And I'm also going to give it an ID. And the only reason I'm giving it an ID is so that we can grab onto it from our JavaScript. Okay, and I'm going to call this names because it's a UL of names. And then inside the UL, we're going to have some LIs. Um, so let's say LI. And I'm going to give this a class of collection dash header. And this is actually going to be the letter. Okay, you know how we had the A and then the names and then the B, the names and so on. So this is where we're going to put the A and I'm going to put it inside of an H5. So we'll just put an A like that. And then under that, we're going to have a list item or a couple list items with the class of collection item. OK, just like that. And then those are going to have a tags, which are just going to go nowhere. They're not actually going to lead to a page. And then we'll have the name. So let's see what do they have for names. Abe. And then we'll, what we'll do is just um, copy the collection item. Paste a couple in here. So we'll have Abe and then I had Adam, Alan and Anna. OK, so those are all the A's. Now what I'll do is copy the collection header and then all the items and then right under it, we'll paste that in and then we'll change this one to B. OK, then we'll do, let's say Beth. We'll do Bill, Bob, and Brad. 
Okay, and then under that, we'll do one more. We'll do C. Obviously, if this was a real application, you'd have all the letters, but I'm not going to, there's no reason to do that. Uh, let's see, what other names did I have? Carry. Carry, we have um, Kathy. And we have Courtney. Okay, we'll just get rid of this one. So let's go ahead and save that, see what we get. So that looks pretty good. Um, now we need our input. Okay, we need a filterable input. So let's go right below the H1 and put in an input. Okay, now materialize is really good. That's one, one of the things I like is you don't even have to add a class name to your input. It'll automatically style it nicely. Um, but we do need an ID so that we can grab onto it in the JavaScript. So that'll be, let's say, filter input. And then let's also add a placeholder. And we'll just say search names. Save that. And there we go. So minimal mockup and it looks pretty good. Now, of course, we didn't have to use um, materialize, but I wanted it to look decent. So let's go right above the ending body tag and put our script. And this is where all of our JavaScript is going to go. Like I said, we're not using any libraries. We're not using jQuery. I mean, you could use jQuery and you could have less code, but you're, you're depending on a library. And that's just it, it, it's not really cool these days to use jQuery if you don't have to. OK, and sometimes I mean, if I use jQuery, a lot of people give me shit and rightfully so. I mean, it's good to just do it, you know, with plain JavaScript. So let's go ahead and um, Let's create a variable to grab this input. OK, so we'll say let we'll call it filter input. And we'll set it to document dot get element by ID. And I'm sure you know most of you guys know what that does. It'll grab any element, any tag by its ID. And remember, we gave that input. Where is it? We gave the input an ID of filter input. Okay, just like we're, we're naming the variable. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Okay, so now that we have that, what I want to do is add an event listener to that. Let me actually add a comment here. I want this to be well commented. So we'll say get um, get input element. And then let's add event listener. Okay, now I could have went like this. In the input, I could go on key up because key up is the event Jesus I can't type so on key up and then call a function but every time I do that you guys give me shit and uh, you know it's 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 kind of the old way of doing things so it's it's good to have an event listener so let's go ahead and do that we're gonna take the filter input and we're gonna say uh, add event listener OK, and then the type of event is going to be a key up. And then when that happens, we're going to call a function that we're going to call filter names. OK, and then we'll put our function here called filter names. OK, and let's just do a console dot log and I'll just put in a one. So now let's go over here and hit F12, open up our Chrome console. And if I start to type, you'll see that it just prints out a one. OK, every time I type it, it'll print out a one. That's what these numbers are here. So obviously, that's not what we want to happen, but we just want to, you know, make sure that that function is actually being called. So now we want to get the value of the input. So let's say get value of input. So we'll create another variable here. Let's say let we'll say filter value. And let's set that to document dot get element by ID. OK, and then remember, we gave it in this input. We gave it an ID of um, actually, you know what we well, that's outside the function. Well, yeah, we'll just do this again. So we'll just say filter input. Uh, and then we don't just want to get the element. We want the value. So we want to do dot value. And then I'm also going to just convert it to uppercase to make sure that the you know when we type in a name the first letter is uppercase and we can do that with just saying two uppercase like that. All right, then let's console log it and see what we get. 
So filter, whoops, filter value. Now, as I type, you'll see down here in the console, it's just going to put out whatever I whatever I put in there. All right, and it's actually going to make everything uppercase, which is fine. I just we just need to have we need to be consistent when we go and we match what's being typed in. We have to make sure that it's uppercase as well. All right, so let's get rid of that console log. And now what we want to do is we want to get the UL. Okay, so the UL we gave an ID of names. So that's what we want to grab onto. We want to create a variable representing that. Let's say get names UL. We'll say let and let's just call this. Um, I guess we'll just call it names and then we'll set it to document dot get element element by ID has an ID of names. All right, so that'll get the UL. And now what we want to do is get all the collection items in the UL. So this UL has a bunch of LIs and some of them have collection header as a class. The ones we want are the collection items because that's what we want to match. We don't care about the actual, you know, the letters. So let's create another variable for those. We'll say get get items. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to call this UL because I don't want to get that confused with the items. So uh, we'll say get li or get li's from UL. And then I'm just going to call this li. All right, so we'll say document dot. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Wait a minute. What did I do? No. We're going to take the ul and then we're going to call get. Um, we're going to call not get. What am I doing? We're going to call query. Select all. Okay. Now query select all or query selector all is a really handy function and, and it kind of in a way can kind of replace jQuery. We can select anything based on its class name or, or whatever, you know, before that that function came along, we had to use get element by ID, meaning we had to just get things by their ID. But now we can grab them by classes or anything else. So um, we're going to get the allies with the class of collection item. OK, so we want to get all of those and it's basically going to put that into an array. All right. Then what we want to do is we want to loop through that array. We want to loop through all the collection items. So let's say loop through collection item allies. So we'll do a for loop. And let's say let I equals zero. As long as I is greater than li dot length. And then we just want to increment by one I plus plus. OK, and then inside this loop, we want to get the um, we want to get the names. And remember, those are wrapped in a tags. So we can use a function called get elements by tag name and then throw an a in there. So we want to get all the links. So let's do that. We'll create a variable called a. All right. Now, since we're in a loop, we want the current iteration of the li. So we're going to use an I right there and then we'll say dot get elements by tag name. OK, and then we'll throw in here a so we're going to get all the links. All right. Actually, you know what? We only want to get the current link, so we want to put zero right there. All right, and then we want to check to uh, see if it matches. We want to check to see if what we type in here is and uh, it has an index inside of the the name, the current name that's in the loop. All right, so let's put a comma here and we'll just say if matches or if match, that's fine. And ah, so we'll do an if. Okay, actually, this will be an if else. And the way that we're going to match is we're going to say if a dot inner HTML. Now, inner HTML is going to grab whatever is inside the a, the a tag. OK, so this is the a tag, but we're looking at this. We're looking at the name inside of it. So inner HTML and remember how we we switched it to uppercase when we you know, when we type it in here, it's being output as uppercase. So we're going to say dot to uppercase just so we're consistent on that. And then we can use dot index of, okay, 
index of, and then we can put in here the filter value. Okay, whatever is being passed in the form. And we just want to match that. We want to say if it's greater than negative one, that means that there's a match, that one of the letters matches one of the letters in the names. Now, what do we want to do if there's a match? We basically don't want to do anything. Um, we, want to, we want to set the CSS style property to nothing. If there isn't a match, we want it to disappear. So we're going to set the style property to none. And the way that we can do that is we can say li. I, meaning the current iteration, the current one we're on, and we're going to set style.display to nothing. Okay, and then if it doesn't match, then we're going to set it to none. All right, so hopefully, yeah, that should work, I believe. So let's save that, and let's go ahead. I'm going to just close the console, and I'm going to put a B in here. Okay, now it's going to take away anything that doesn't have a B, And then let's put an R and there we go. So it matches Brad. If I put Brad E, then it's not going to match. Okay, let's see. Let's match Anna. So we'll do A and now it's going to match anything that has an A and an N. You could you could modify this to make it so that, you know, it would have to be A N at the beginning or A N together. You could do that, but I want to keep this really simple. And this this works, you know, in for most people, this is going to work. If you're looking for Anna, you're going to find Anna, you know. But I mean, like I said, you can tweak it how you want. But that's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to leave it. Um, feel free to, you know, edit this, make it your own, do what you want with it. Uh, just I just figured it'd be a pretty cool project or, or, or at least a simple project for people that are kind of, you know, learning JavaScript, maybe maybe you're working in some frameworks, but don't really understand how to build something with just vanilla JavaScript. I want to do some more videos that that are, um, you know, based on just regular JavaScript rather than knowing how to put together uh, or how to remember how to put together a React application, because you really need to understand the code and understand what's going on. Um, and hopefully, you know, the videos that I put out help you guys. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, leave a like. Uh, again, I, I've been mentioning it lately. I do have a Patreon. It's in the description if you want to check that out. Even a dollar per month from enough people will allow me to do this full time and, and do projects like this every single day. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.